Uh, so it, it's morning in Beijing. It's morning in Beijing, and it's cold in Beijing. It's we clear sky. Yeah, we can degree. see that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and uh, here in Washington, uh, it's looking like, although it's not official yet, that Donald Trump may be pulling off a big upset. Yeah, it's quite amazing to see. Although I have to say that um, in Chinese media, only very few people are actually following the event. I talked to a couple of uh, journalist friends that set up live streams from the U.S. and um, uh, big specials on their websites, and they've all been told to shut it off um, because the government just wants to keep the whole election night on a very low profile. Even the state-owned media, very few have the U.S. election on the uh, front pages today. So it's it's quite amazing to see that international media attention is so much on what's going on in the U.S., but here in China, it's uh, quite quite different, I have to say. Uh, officially, China uh, uh, says nothing about the election, but who would they rather see become president, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, or neither one? Well, that, that's hard to say. With uh, Clinton, it's the Chinese perception is a little bit, she's like the devil who you know. She has had quite a hard stance on China, and a lot of people remember that she she has openly criticized how China was handling uh, the case of a couple of um, female activists calling for um, basically blaming um, female harassment in public transportation. They have been arrested afterwards, and Clinton was really, really outspoken criticizing the Chinese government. And this is still today being perceived as one of the reasons that uh, Clinton is trying to meddle <coughs> with domestic affairs here in China. So they really see uh, Clinton as the bully, whereas um, with, uh, with Donald Trump, only very few people have actually spoken on what they think about Donald Trump on the level of the Chinese leadership. There has been one, the um, finance minister, Lo Wei, who called him um, crazy, um, but Lo Wei has lost his job uh, two days ago. He's not the finance minister anymore. So of the current government, even um, of the foreign ministry, nobody has commented on the on the U.S. election or on a preference when it comes to the, to the two candidates. Certainly, uh, Donald Trump has uh, not, said, uh, not had a lot of kind words about China, criticized their protectionist policies, their uh, manipulation of their own currency for their own purposes, etc. Uh, should he win today, uh, what is typical in China? Will there be some kind of official statement uh, marking this election, or is it just radio silence? Um, honestly, we don't know. Um, at 3 o'clock this afternoon, there will be a press conference, the daily press conference by the foreign ministry. The most likely scenario is, if we have a result by then, that they're going to congratulate China on the result, but they will probably not comment on whether they think it's a good or a bad result. When, coming to the, uh, when, when thinking about the Donald Trump's criticism, blaming China as a currency manipulator, um, blaming China for stealing U.S. jobs, I think a lot of people take it as, um, as yeah, election rhetoric. So they will rather wait and see what the real Trump policies would be if, if he's going to be the next president of the United States. And uh, if, if, uh, there, if the uh, rhetoric is more bluster than reality, uh, uh, do you think that the uh, uh, Chinese will... Uh, uh, attempt to embrace his administration, uh, move towards him in some manner in order to appease uh, the new uh, yeah, uh, uh, opponent, so to speak, in the U.S.? Uh, China has made some steps to embrace Barack Obama when uh, he was U.S. president. So when Xi Jinping, the, the Chinese president, took his job in 2012, he, um, uh, he proposed a new so-called big power relationship. So they really wanted to strive for a new way on how to establish um, a new way of communication between the United States and, and China. Um, although this new type of relationship has hit quite a few bumpers. So we have had the cybersecurity issue. We have had the South China Sea where China has and the United States have seriously clashed. So I do not think that China will significantly change its policies. Um, China has a clear stance that it claims large territories in the South China Sea, and it feels that the, um, that the 
United States with their pivot to Asia are a threat, that it, it is some kind of containment of China. Um, so as long as Trump would not try to push uh, on those type of issues, I think they'll find a, a working ground. But if he does, China will have a strong response. Hillary Clinton is expected to be more active um, in her foreign policy than Barack Obama. Do you think that the frictions uh, in, the so in the South China uh, Sea between the US and China will intensify? Um, this is what a, a lot of uh, US-China watchers are predicting. They've actually criticized Obama for being too soft when it comes to China. So Obama has stressed his Asia policy with this pivot to Asia, but when it, come, uh, when, when it came to serious friction, um, he rather tried to, to take his smooth away. So um, in, this, in this field of political analysts, a lot of them actually call for a stronger stance when it comes to China. Clinton would definitely be a person who could push for it. I mean, she has already proven that she is not shying away when it comes to conflicts with China. If she really does, we, we would have to see, but um, I, I think it's quite likely that um, they would take a more critical approach when it comes to issues like the South China Sea. Stefan, this has been great. We appreciate you tuning in to us.